When hundreds of small drones begin to fill the sky, any commander is faced with a brutal economic dilemma. Do you launch million-dollar surface-to-air missiles against objects that may cost a few thousand dollars each, or do you find a cheaper and faster way to blanket the air with lethal fire? This is the logic behind the return of medium-caliber anti-aircraft guns in Europe and why the Rheinmetall Skynex system combined with A-head programmable ammunition is attracting so much attention. It is not a nostalgic revival of old World War II flak, but a very modern answer to the problems of drone swarms and the economics of 21st century air defense. The rise of cheap drones has been one of the most striking lessons of the war in Ukraine. Commercial quadcopters are modified into reconnaissance platforms and grenade carriers. Shahed-type loitering munitions are launched by the dozens against cities. Lancet kamikaze drones hunt artillery batteries. Each individual system is inexpensive compared to the platforms they attack. Against this kind of target saturation, high-end missile systems are ill-suited. Firing an Iris T, NASAMS, or Patriot missile at a drone costs in the hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars, and the missile stocks are limited. You cannot afford to waste such valuable weapons against low-end threats that arrive in large numbers. European planners realized they needed something cheaper, with high rates of fire, able to kill drones in bulk. This is where programmable ammunition comes in. Instead of relying on a shell to hit directly, a 35 millimeter round can be set to detonate at a precise point in space throwing out a controlled cloud of tungsten sub-projectiles. The Skynex system integrates radar, electro-optical sensors, and a fire control computer to calculate the exact moment of detonation. A single burst can release hundreds of small fragments that shred rotors, wings, and electronics. Unlike traditional flak, which relied on volume and luck, the head ammunition is designed for precision. The detonation timing is programmed electronically just before the shell leaves the barrel, ensuring the pattern of fragments is placed exactly where the target will be. In practice, this turns each 35 millimeter burst into a cone of lethal particles that drones cannot easily evade. The Skynex platform itself is modular and can be deployed around bases, critical infrastructure, or as a mobile component of a layered defense. Each battery consists of sensor units, command modules, and one or more 35 millimeter cannons fed with programmable ammunition. It has a rate of fire of several hundred rounds per minute, enough to engage swarms rather than single targets. The logistics are also favorable. Thousands of shells can be stored at a fraction of the cost of equivalent missile stocks. The engagement envelope covers short to medium ranges, exactly the zone where drones, helicopters, and cruise missiles are most threatening. The result is a capability that fills the gap between shoulder-launched man pads and larger surface-to-air systems. Evidence from tests and limited operational deployment suggests that this combination works. In controlled demonstrations, ahead shells consistently intercept small UAVs by saturating the air with fragments. Reports from the Ukrainian battlefield indicate that similar systems using programmable rounds have been effective in protecting infrastructure against Shahed drones. The advantage is not only technical, but also economic. A shell may cost a few thousand dollars, 
a tiny fraction of a modern missile. This allows defenders to fire many rounds without bankrupting their defense budget and to sustain a high tempo of operations even when under repeated attack. In an era where drone production lines can deliver thousands of units per month, having a cost-effective counter is not optional, but essential. On the tactical level, integrating such guns changes how air defense layers are structured. At the top, you still have long-range missiles to deter aircraft and high-end cruise missiles. At the bottom, you have infantry with man pads. But in the middle, there is now a renewed role for rapid-firing guns with programmable ammunition. When a swarm approaches, Skynex can blanket the sky at short range, protecting both troops and fixed assets. This relieves pressure on missile batteries, preserving their stockpiles for targets that truly require them. For the defender, the key advantage is flexibility. The same gun can engage drones, helicopters, light aircraft, or even incoming artillery rockets depending on how the rounds are programmed. Of course, no system is perfect. Skynex and Ahead have limitations that must be acknowledged. Their effectiveness depends on high-quality sensors and fire control computers. Without accurate tracking, the shells will burst in the wrong place. Against extremely fast or high-altitude targets, a 35 millimeter shell lacks the reach to be decisive. Large swarms that are widely dispersed may overwhelm even a high rate of fire. There are also logistic challenges. Tungsten is not cheap, and mass production of specialized ammunition requires secure supply chains. Adversaries will adapt as well, experimenting with stealthier drones, electronic warfare to confuse radar, or decoys to soak up fire. No single weapon is a silver bullet. What Skynex represents is a tool in the toolbox, one that works best as part of an integrated defense system rather than on its own. Strategically, the implications are significant for the Nordic states and NATO as a whole. For countries like Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, which are boosting their defense budgets and preparing for large-scale conscription, affordable air defense matters. These are societies that plan for total defense, integrating civilian infrastructure and reserve forces into the military system. A weapon that can be deployed around air bases, ports, or power plants, manned by trained reservists, and sustained with affordable ammunition fits this philosophy perfectly. It also supports the European defense industry since both Rheinmetall in Germany and Bofors in Sweden have the expertise to produce such systems. By investing in guns and shells rather than only in missiles, Europe reduces its dependence on a few foreign suppliers and gains resilience. Looking further ahead, these guns may be paired with other technologies. Directed energy weapons, such as lasers, are under development but not yet ready for mass deployment. In the meantime, programmable ammunition provides a bridge solution. Electronic warfare and cyber defenses will also complement the kinetic approach. The future is likely to be a layered mix long-range missiles, mid-range guns, close-range lasers, and non-kinetic effects. The common factor is cost efficiency and sustainability. Wars are not won in single spectacular engagements, but in the ability to defend infrastructure day after day, month after month, against waves of small but persistent threats. In that sense, the return of the humble 35mm gun, armed with 21st century ammunition, 
is not a step backward, but a step toward a realistic and sustainable defense posture. The conclusion is clear. Skynex and AHEAD do not replace missiles, they complement them. They restore depth to air defense networks at a price point that allows for endurance. They demonstrate that technological innovation can come from reimagining old calibers rather than only chasing futuristic projects. Most importantly, they show that Europe is taking the drone threat seriously and is willing to adapt. For the Nordic region, which faces the pressure of Russian activity in the Baltic and Arctic, such systems can provide the resilience needed to withstand repeated probing. For NATO as a whole, they are part of a broader answer to the age of mass drones. If you want to understand the future of air defense, do not just look at hypersonic missiles or stealth aircraft. Look at a 35 millimeter shell filled with tungsten, timed to explode at just the right moment, and imagine a sky filled with shredded drones. That is what modern warfare increasingly looks like.